what the mm -hmm. power of real estate can do for you. Yeah, the power of real estate. Underline that. Underline Hi. that. <laughs> so when and why did you buy your first property? Were you did you know that you are investing in property at the time or were you just trying to shelter your family? So when I bought my first property, it was getting into business. So from day one, because remember at the age of 11, I was um, advised on how property works. And when I was at varsity, I used to do leaflet distribution. So, you know, the mm -hmm. guys that stand on the street and give papers and flyers, by the way, when you meet those guys on the street, please take their flyers because we'll do maybe it. one of them is like me or going to be like me. Not all of them are hobos. There are students okay. doing this. That's how we yeah. hustle a student to make part-time money. Of course. So, so when, <laughs> so when I was doing leaflet distribution, uh, I used to get paid on a weekly basis and I, was save, I saved up my money. So I then started buying shares on JSE when what? I was a student. No way. Come on, yeah. Echo. No. How old are you then? You are no. 17. No, at varsity, at varsity, oh, I was, varsity. Yeah, I, I was, I was 19, 20, 21. On, I yeah. still, still. Yes. Yes. Whoa, so, that is insane. Yeah. Echo, that's unfair. No, I so, should have gone no, to your varsity. So, so I think the good thing that's, that's worked to my favor is I'm surrounded by good people. So my sister is a big yeah. factor in my life. My sister paid my school fees. She paid my varsity yeah. school fees. So as I was at varsity, my sister used to give me books to read. A part of the book that I read was uh, Cash Flow Quadrant, Robert, Robert <gasps> Kiyosaki. Rich right. Dad or Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. So yeah. when I started varsity, and remember, yeah. I've always had the intention of making money. Even when oh, I was a child, growing up, okay. mm. I used to sell for my grandmother. And okay. I saved money, made sweets, sell sweets, paid my own school fees at the age of 11. Mom, it, wasn't, it wasn't a must for me to pay school fees, but yeah. my, I've always been, my mind is always on that level of being independent wow. financially. I am so encouraged. My daughter loves money, guys. She wants a YouTube channel. She sells me everything. That's very yes. encouraging, Echo. Thanks for telling us that. <laughs> yes, yes. You pay for an A, you pay for a B. I do, I do. And she's like, but a B in Zulu is much better, mommy. I mean, I can get A somewhere else. But a B, come on, you know, yes. I am forever paying. Oh, yes. God, I'm bankrupt. <laughs> Yes, it's good. Let, let her get to use that money, invest that money. <laughs> will do, will do. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you start, okay. Pamphlet, you start buying shares. Oh my yes. God. Yes. yes. You have to tell us now. Tell us the progression of that story. We're now investing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so then, of course, everything I do, my intention has always been, or strategy has always been, be a student first before you become a teacher. So getting into shares when I read the book given to me, to me by my sister as um, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and he was talking about shares and he was talking about how he buys, how he owns oil companies and the rest. So I figured, why don't I put my money in shares because I'm making money, I'm, I'm, I was making 250 a week. So I'll pocket 50 oh, bucks. Oh, that's a lot. Yes, uh, pocket 50 bucks, save the 200. And then I started researching on shares and yeah. stumbled on the internet, got uh, information about it. And people were talking about penny stocks and how they work. So yeah. basically, yes. basically mm. you don't buy shares that's more than 10 rand. So in, 2000, <laughs> two, in, in 2002, 2003, right? Yeah. Companies like Famous Brand. Famous Brand is the owner of the Bonnets, Wimpy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ocean Basket. Those yeah. companies, yeah. I bought those shares at, at two rand in 2000. Oh my gosh. Echo, you are so smart. You know what I did at that time? Yeah. Also at UCT at university, because I was yeah. also obsessed with the stock market. I invested in the Ghanaian stock market because uh, I figured it was cheaper. I don't yeah. know what's happening with my shares. My dad till this day manages that portfolio because I'm still a little upset that I yeah. went that route. So he does. <laughs> yes. He gets all that stuff, but it's still there. Yes. But like so I'm listening to you, I'm like, I didn't think like that. I mean, I was on the path, but 
Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, but, but again, <laughs> so, so it goes back. What, what does famous brand do? Yeah. They, they sell food. Again, goes mm, back to oh, what my mom food. said to me. Ooh. Right? So even ah. my stocks that I picked was around the necessities, basic necessities of human beings. Yes. Oh my God, that's such a gem. Yeah. That oh. is so incredible. Wow. So you were listening. Well, you know, boys in university and they are 19. And if you went to it, boys hung out at Bozoli Echo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they hung out at Bozoli and on yes. Friday, one o'clock at oh. Bozoli. Oh, they and the Matrix. <laughs> and the Matrix, yes, yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I forgot the matrix. And at Bozoli on Friday afternoon, yes. Bozoli yes. has got an open bar and they sell you alcohol that's open with the with the dumpies that are open. You can't take them away. You yes. Oh. yes. Yes. And you are busy distributing pamphlets. How did you escape that? What what kind of teenager is this? Okay, so to be honest, when I was growing up, again, it's influenced by the, the neighbors that yeah. were staying around us. Mm. So even though I never had a direct mentor, I observed business owners around me, right? Okay. So my next door neighbor, for example, was running a logistic companies that went bust, right? And, and those are the things that helps me to make decisions in terms of yeah. what I do. Yeah. Another next door neighbor was a mere policeman that turned his life around and became uh, a timber dealer. So in Ghana, we used to, they used to sell a lot of timber for wood and papers, oh. right? Yeah. And he became a very successful timber dealer. So wow. I think the time that I was born in the eighties was the right time for me. It, 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 yeah. it, it works, it fits, has it. So, even though I never had them, I had their kids as my friends, and I used to go there and I would overhear conversations, father talking on the phone, dealing with his employees, how they're handling them, you know? So I observed from, from far, and it's kind of, it was interesting, it was fascinating to know that, you know, how, and, and, and to me, the anxiousness also, or curiosity, thinking, how is this man paying all these people? How can one person pay 30 people, 100 people? How are they doing that? How are they right? doing that? Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, and right. yeah, I guess. Basically, it's exposure to these yeah. people. I, love yes. I feel like, did yes. you stay in it? Yes. How, how else did you use it? Okay, so three bedroom, two bathrooms. I stayed in the main bedroom right, mm -hmm. duplex, stayed in the main bedroom, rented out two to my varsity friends that started yes. working, right? And I was charging them 6,000 rent, so 3,000 each, each bedroom, Okay. right? You were living for free. And my bond was at 3,200. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> right, oh, so yeah. I was living for free, and on top of that, my expenses was cut down, it was reduced because every month we used to contribute to buy groceries. Bro so I'm spending 300 rent on groceries because we're three people and we're contributing uh, 900 at that time to buy groceries a month. I like Petrol, that. we travel together. So oh all the gosh. money that we're making, what do you do? We, we like all work in the <laughs> That is so oh, awesome. so much. And, I, you know, let's just talk about house hacking, um, Echo. When I tell my nephews and nieces about house hacking, everyone has got this face that goes, ew, what about privacy? Yes. What's your sense? What is your answer to someone when you tell them about house hacking? As, especially, what is a 22-year-old and a 24-year-old insisting on privacy when they don't have money? What do you say to them? I ask them two things. Do you have a kid? No. So what is privacy? You don't have a kid? What do you want? What, so the question I always yeah. ask people, what do you want? 
Yeah. They tell me their products, what yeah. they want. Yeah. How is it going to help people in terms of yeah. what you want? Yeah. You answer question number two. Question number three is how are you going to make money out of what you want and after you've helped people? Absolutely. How are and you going to get there? Yeah. And the system comes in. So to me, I say, mind your own business, right? You worried, they're not worried that of privacy. They're worried about maybe bringing a girlfriend in or a boyfriend or- That's it. You know, that's the privacy they're talking about. And thinking about what people are going to think about me. No, mind your own business. Because at the end of the day, you came as an individual and you will go as an individual. Even you're going to leave your mom or your mom is going to leave you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Eko, this is like, this is super, super important. And all of us really, we can house hack. I believe there are even high end house hacks. hacks. You can hack at Dane Fen. Uh, for sure. Huge, huge house, for six sure. bedroom house. What are we doing? We like beautiful surroundings. The leader can come and stay and pay me Airbnb fees because yes. it is that it is that type of a property. And as we could live, one person lives on one level, another person lives on another level. Very possible not yes. to see each other. And you can you can actually live in a very, very high end suburb doing yes. house hacking. I love that. So that yes. was your first property. Yeah. Yes. We're going yeah. to get to this being a property boss as well. This this yes. hurts me. Mm. What? <laughs> this is so fascinating, right? Like it I am is. just I just like that like you were traveling even you were saving even on petrol. I'm like, yes. Wow, that is some um, that is next level, right? So he was grocery hacking. Grocery hacking and 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 car hacking, everything because <laughs> When we don't learn that, and you know, as Africans, we grow, we grow up in villages, really. We yes. are brought up by a village. And yes. for some reason, the first thing that we want to do is to leave village mentality. And village mentality actually makes you generous and you are able to share. Something has yes. gone yeah. wrong in our head. Yes. But let's talk about real estate. Yes. yes. So, oh. yeah, please, Ben, go ahead. I wanted to ask you a call. So now you've got this uh, three bedroom deep, uh, duplex. How do you get the next property? Uh, what happened? What led you to the next property? Okay, so, so before I answer that question, let me take one step back. Okay. When I started working, mm -hmm. I had a goal, right? Okay. Setting goals are very important. I had a yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. My goal yeah. was that I'm going to work for five years and then yes. I, I'm out. Yes. Really? right? To set up my own business. Okay. I don't have a mother that's going to give me money to start my own business. I don't yeah. have a sister that's going to give me money to start my own business. I don't yeah. have a father that's going to give me money to set up my own business. But right. I have a father, a mother, and a sister that gave me something very important, education. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Right? Yeah. So, so again, because you have clarity and you have a goal, you work backwards and know that if you want to do it in five years, this is how much you need in five years. So when I bought that first property, the reason why I rented it out is because three months later, I took my rental income to the bank and I said, listen, you want me to pay 3,000 rent? I'm getting 6,000 rent. Every month, I'm putting this 6,000 rent in this bank account. Yeah. I've got an excess of 12,000 rent now. Right. Yeah. Because I've paid more than enough. So yes. I need you to give me another property. This time, okay. you're going to give me the property on my salary. Because okay. I've got rent that pays everything. And I've got salary. Remember, I'm still working for someone. I'm still employed. Mm -hmm. So I've got oh, yeah. double income. So yeah. this time, instead of giving me four four hundred thousand rand, you actually give me one point two million because now my affordability has doubled. Yes. So in the same year, and I'm going to talk you through. In the very same year, I bought thirteen properties. 
in the very same wow. day. Wow. Wow. How right. does one? You didn't buy the second property. You bought 30 plus 13. Yes. Yes. Right. So what wow. you what so how do you do that? Again, there are formulas that you use, right? And I'll yeah. talk you through my strategies. Okay. Sure. Right. First is what? Because I've got the rental income, it gives me, but remember, I started by saying the properties were discounted already, the property of value. Of course, yes. So yes. if the bank says to you, this property at the higher end is 600,000 rent, yeah. at the lower end is 400,000 rent, you mm. buy it from people that are desperate or they've got financial issues that they want to get out of the deal, and I get it at 400,000 rent. It right. means from day one, I've got 200,000 rent equity mm. that Thank I can you. take from the bank. Yes. 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 Right. And what yeah. did I do? Because I've done my research and I know traditionally the, the, the property value in that area, I registered the property, the bond at a higher price. Why? Okay. Because I wanted to take care of inflation. So a property that I bought for 400,000 rent, I you registered, registered 800,000. No, at 800,000 rent. What? Because the bank has been conservative in their valuation. Okay. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah. So, so if the market turns in my mm. favor, I have 400,000 rent that I can get from the bank. Of and course. I don't need to do any registration. So I don't need to pay any, find, any fees. I've locked in now. So now the same property that I paid 9,000 rand for bond transfer. Today at 800, you're paying anything not less than 30,000 rand. Yeah. On bond yeah. registration fees. Yeah. Right? So 10 mm -hmm. years ago or nine years ago, you buy a property, you paid 9,000 to do the bond registration at 800,000. Yeah. So more than three times you've saved your money, inflation. So you understand interest rate inflation, how it works. Okay. Right? So it's all about understanding how money works and how do you make money.